we've housed almost 26,000 individuals since 2011. 64% reduction. 85% of those folks remain successfully housed. We're under 3,000 people that are homeless in the city of Houston, the fourth largest city. Housing first. Housing first. You can't house without the wraparound services. We've done some really great things, and we have a long way to go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our mobile studio. As always, thank you so much for riding along with us as we continue making our film about solutions to homelessness. So how do you think it's going so far? It's been going great because we've hit a major milestone. What? We're now officially done with production and we're now editing the film. Right on. So this will be our last behind the scenes episode from the road, but we will continue giving out updates throughout the year as we edit the film. So we finally made it to Houston. We were really looking forward to this one. For years, we've heard great things about how Houston addresses the homelessness and we needed to see it for ourselves. And we really appreciate them welcoming us in and letting us do it. City officials from all over the country fly into Houston just to see how they address their homelessness issue. And now we'd like to show you how they do it. So sit back and enjoy watching serious people doing serious things. Back in 2011, we had the sixth largest homeless population in the country, with on any given night over 8,500 individuals experiencing homelessness. And the mayor at the time, Mayor Anise Parker, said something has to change. And at the same time, we were named a priority community by HUD. That is not a good designation. That is like getting your wrist slapped with a ruler in class. That was good because HUD was able to give the city some technical assistance. And so we used that technical assistance to bring in experts. These were experts that came and helped advise the mayor's office, our housing department, our agencies, our lead agency. And everybody sat in a room together to figure out what we were doing wrong and what we needed to do to fix it. What do you call an individual experiencing homelessness in a shelter? Homeless. What's the answer to people being homeless? Housing. The only way to end homelessness is permanent housing with supportive services, period. And that's what we do here in Houston. One of the things that we're doing as a system is we're hosting navigation events. Helping people move through the housing process and taking something that often takes months or even years and do it all in one day. We have uh, Surge, we have Avenue 360, there's Hope Haven out here, we have uh, Star of Hope. They all have outreach teams, so clients that are considered chronic, we bring them in here. So they can actually get referred and get enrolled in a housing program on the spot. This system, The Way Home, really does operate like a team. I've lived in Houston ever since 87. I went to Wilford Beauty Academy and uh, got my beauty certificate. Then after that, I pretty much just wandered off into like another direction. I decided to get off into drugs. That took almost like 25 years of my life. I was wandering downtown and then I ran across Search. The caseworkers there told me they could help me with this, that, and this, and that. ID, social security card. I felt like I belonged there. And they made me feel like we are here to help you. What is it you need? You know, and I was like, shoot, I just gotta grab this. So everything I could get, I grabbed hold to it and held it close. Search had already started accepting people without judgment about how ready they were for housing and placing them into our single room occupancy units that we had in our building too at the time. My first apartment was 2014. That was at the single room occupancy SRO, North Line. That's when I started working at Chick-fil-A. What you need, sweetie? You need something? What you need, baby? Two iced coffees we're still waiting on. Oh, okay. Two regular iced coffees. I got you. I didn't know they was for you. Hey, my friend. How you doing? 
You doing all right? There you go, darlings. I apologize. See y'all already too. Hey, if I'd have known that. No, this is great. This is a way to cap it off right here. That's the way to cap it off. This is it right here. All right, guys. Thank you so much. My pleasure. What can we do for you? Yeah. What can you do for me? Yeah. Have a good day. Done. I mean, it's just Chick-fil-A and I'm just the hostess, but it's something to make my life fulfilling. And I get up every morning looking forward to coming to work to make other people smile and happy. You know, it's nothing like having your own place. And this is the only time in my life where I feel like I actually had peace. So new numbers have come in. Since 2011, Houston has housed 28,000 people. They've reduced homelessness in their community 63%. They have 3,200 people still homeless, but they're the fourth largest city. And in a two year period, almost 90% housing retention rates. These are crazy numbers. Any city would be happy to have them. Yet, Houston doesn't have the resources to eliminate the problem. But if they did, there's no limit. I mean, we could end homelessness, but uh, that's not the sandbox that we play in. It's not the sandbox we live in. They've looked under the couch cushions at City Hall. We cannot find any more money, especially with a voter-imposed revenue cap. But that's how we just have to get smarter. Houston is not unique. Every city we visited in this country, it's the same story. It's not that we can't end homelessness. It's that we don't. Yeah. We visited 12 communities all around the United States, and we saw how all of them address their homelessness, and they all are successful in some aspect of what they do, but it's innovation that leads to big reductions in homeless numbers. So how did you do it, Houston? The secret sauce here in Houston, data-driven best practices of Housing First, working together as a collaborative system, having a really strong lead agency, and community partners willing to be at the table. What, what is the Coalition for the Homeless? We're the lead organization for all of the homeless service providers um, in Houston to make sure they're, they're spending the money the way they're supposed to be spending, that they're serving the clients the way they're supposed to be serving them, and that they're not leaving any money on the table. And it's up for the cities and the counties to come together and get our internal houses in order first before we can look at our homeless response systems and challenge them to be coordinated and work together. The mayor, who's ever the, the head, was the mayor, was the governor, you name it, the county judge, um, uh, has to be at the table, engaged in the conversation, understanding what the different issues are. And quite frankly, uh, on occasion, the mayor has to be out there in the field. My name is Ray Perez, and I am the sergeant for the Homeless Outreach Team for Constable Precinct 2. My sole dedication is just to doing homeless outreach, going out there, engaging with our homeless community residents, and trying to connect them with social services. And part of that is teaming up with organizations like the Coalition for the Homeless. Dude, this is epic. What? We could not be successful in our work without the communication and collaboration from the mayor's office, the city of Houston, to all of our partners and community members. Do y'all share stuff? Yeah. Awesome. It's so essential to have everybody on the same playing field. This wouldn't be possible unless Constable Garcia would allow, would have allowed a, a hot team mm -hmm. to be developed. We requested resources and we we didn't we didn't get them, so we created our team anyway. But it, it's only one guy, and it's John Ray Perez. I've been through the cycles. I've been through the cycle so many times that I'm tired of doing the cycle. I'm ready to to just admit, hey, I don't function in society very well. This one is a little different because the diversion center is combined with the Harris Center, which they are the mental health authority for Harris County. Right. I'll give you some thought. I might try to take you up on that. I know this works, mm -hmm. and if we could do it in a grander scale, we could help so many more. In our experience covering homelessness systems around the country, change is heavily resisted. But the only way to have system-wide success in addressing homelessness is to create a new system. 
And anytime we've seen a successful system created, this is exactly what it looks like in the beginning. If an agency wants to be funded by the city, by the county, by the COC, even by the philanthropic partners, they have to be part of our collaborative system, The Way Home. And if they don't want to be part of that system that utilizes housing as the best practice, that's fine. They just won't get any funding from those resources. What was the incentive for being part of the system? Was it having funding pulled from you? Yes. Nonprofits don't naturally work well together. No. So. So. <laughs> That's a little myth that people have about all those do-gooders. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the system built it that way, especially when you're competing for dollars. If you're all the time competing for dollars and there's scarcity, you're having to show and prove that you're the best at what you do, and my way is the best way, so invest here, put your dollars here. It keeps us from co collaborating. Before we came to this idea of Housing First and concept of Housing First, we were competing with each other. We gave people a lot of a long time to evaluate what they were doing. Uh, we worked with them to put in performance improvement processes to make sure that things were working. Uh, but at the end of the day, if they didn't make any improvements and if it hadn't changed, then um, unfortunately they did lose their funding. But what it also did is it kind of forced everybody to collaborate on some level. And it took a while for us to, you know, register and, and really accept this idea. But I'm grateful that, that we did come to that conclusion, some of us faster than others. Once the structure was put in place, um, with buy-in from all of the partners. We had regular, like weekly leadership meetings with all of those individuals to make sure that what we had set forth to do was actually happening. And it's still not smooth and easy. We, we, there's still a lot of tension in, in our relationships. You know, it's, it's not all, well, you know, families, there's always that tension. We do hate each other and we don't get along all the time and we'll badmouth one another and we'll be pissed off at one another. But then we pull it together because it's the right thing to do. 100 agencies, 660 square miles, 3.4 million people. The fact that we can get along at all <laughs> and, and function and have agreements and challenge each other and support each other is kind of amazing. Curtis is, is getting a permanent supportive housing placement today. I've worked with him for the past three years through two different agencies. We had some hardships getting him in but he's finally moving in uh, today. He's a uh, located apartment. He did the application with help from his navigator. It's a place that he, he chose to live. Best day of my life. Oh, I've been blessed by the best. I'm feeling great, ecstatic. <laughs> I'm not homeless anymore. <laughs> this is a permanent supported housing. He has a case manager that will meet with him, they'll actually do site visits, uh, whatever services that he needs that he's not currently getting, he, they can make sure they, they connect him for those services. Mm -hmm. There's no requirements for being sober, there's no requirements for being in treatment. While these resources will be offered if the client wants them, it's not a requirement. Let them battle their demons behind closed doors like the rest of us. Like rest of us. If you're not worrying about what you're going to do to survive and have a roof over your head, then maybe then you can look at your addiction if, you, if that's what you need to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe then you can focus on your mental health and you can have your medication in the unit with you that no one's going to steal. It's, it's so unfair to ask anybody to right. get their life together when they have no resources mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. So. Housing First, is it seems like a concept that everyone should embrace. I agree. You know? I mean, it seems very obvious. Okay. What you got, got there? It. My lease. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! Congratulations. Oh, there we go. Oh, you're home, Curtis. I am. This will work. This will work. <laughs> okay. Home sweet home. <laughs> this is real. Been on the streets for like five, six years, and they have did everything they could, and I finally made it. You like the place? Oh, I love it. I love it. It's the beginning. You got to start somewhere, and it beats being outside. It's in a nice neighborhood, and it's just, it's just a blessing. It was lightning speed, moving people, and so many people 
um, from the street into homes. It was joyful. It was wonderful. We, we can help you find an apartment today. What's it like having the, to live on the street with all the trauma and, and all, the, all the craziness and you walk into this calm, calm from, from that storm? It's a transition, it's a transition. I'm not waking up to cars rolling over the freeway, I'm not waking up to a crash over here. I'm not hearing gunshots down the streets that, wee, you know what I mean? Right here, peace, calm, quiet. For someone like me who likes to do art, allows the concentration, allows the peace, the calm, that you don't get on the streets where, bah, bah. We're, we are light years from where we used to be, but we still have lots of work to do. I don't want us to ever get to the point that we can walk by, bike paths, or drive by, or run by people who are homeless on our streets, and we are numb to what we see. The goal is, within the next couple years, to house an additional 7,000 individuals experiencing homelessness to reduce our unsheltered population to below 1,000. And, you know, we want to shoot for, for ending chronic homelessness. What a great way to end our year of production. Now it's to the business of editing the footage that we have to create our film, Beyond the Bridge, A Solution to Homelessness. We'd like to recognize our friends Maureen Burns Murtha and John Murtha, who helped us with lodging in Houston and other places around the country. Thanks, guys. We also want to give a huge shout out to Oak Foundation, Cooper Housing Institute, Melville Charitable Trust, Hilton Foundation, and our friends Paula and Frank Zavril for supporting our project. And a big overdue thank you to the Massachusetts Housing and Shelter Alliance for the years of support as we develop the idea of our film and being our primary fiscal sponsor and Pathways Housing First Institute also being our fiscal sponsor and serving as a consulting resource on the film. Our heartfelt thank you to both Sam and Joe. Thanks friends. And Houston, Catherine, Jess, Mark, Anna, thank you guys for making this one of the best trips that we've had. Here's a couple of bonus clips. If you're interested in Houston's success, it's very important to know this. We would not be able to do any of our work without our public housing authorities. Both the cities and the counties are all aligned to work to move that needle together. Well, housing authority is a, I, I call it an anchor to the city. Every city needs affordable housing, and everyone needs a roof over their head. And so we provide that great resource that individuals need, that bricks and mortar, but also some of the wraparound services through partnership. And we just happened to be in Houston during the Astros' very exciting World Series run. Mr. Mayor. You know, since I've been mayor, the Astros have gone into the playoffs six consecutive years of three, four World Series and two uh, World Series championships. Now, can I claim, claim credit for that? Well, I am the mayor, so. <laughs> We'd like to thank all of you who have ridden with us in this car on our journey across the country for the last year. In the coming months, we will be sending out updates as we edit the film and develop the social impact campaign to coincide with the release of the film. Please follow us on all of our social media channels, subscribe to our email list, and we'll stay in touch with you that way. We encourage you to use the seven episodes of our behind the scenes series. When you're talking about homelessness with people, especially if it's a difficult conversation, this is why we made them. We'll see you soon.